everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Once again, this is Teacher Aubrey, your English teacher. And I would like to welcome all of you to our another live lesson. And we have, we already have 28 live audience tonight. Yeah, and so I am requesting our live audience to please share. Yes, share the link of this live video para mas maraming maabot, para mas maraming matuto. All right, so this is just a very busy day. Naging very busy kanina dahil nga nagkaroon kami ng uh, virtual graduation ng aming mga learners, grade 6 learners, and also to all the uh, to all the graduates of the batch 2020 to, 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 to 2021. I uh, binabati ko po kayo na congratulations and good luck on your new journey. So while we are still waiting for more live audience tonight, batiin muna natin yung mga early birds. Our lesson for tonight, by the way, is about public speaking or the tips you should know on how you will become an effective public speaker. By the way, I already had a video of this. Pero hindi dito sa channel ko. Nag-guess ako sa isang um, program sa INC TV uh, discussing these things. Alright? But I want na meron akong bukod na video dito mismo sa channel ko para mapapanood ninyo. And I want it to become more interactive. Kaya naman, I decided to make another live video. By the way, malinaw po ba yung aking audio? Last time, my dear learners, uh, medyo, medyo ano tayo eh, medyo... Intermittent yung signal ng internet natin. Kaya naman, uh, pardon me kung hindi nakisama nung gasi nung, nung magtatapos na yung ating internet. So ngayon, ang naisip ko, nag-back up ako ng data. So if ever na mag man tayo mamaya, uh, meron tayong back, back up na data para hindi maputo lang ating usapan at ang ating pag-aaral. So the program or... Uh, yes, the program of our lesson for tonight will be this. Makinig pong mabuti. Uh, babatin muna natin yung mga kasama nating learners live audience tonight. Once again, I am requesting all of you to uh, share the link of this live video para mas maraming maabot ang ating tuturo. Kindly share the link to your classmate kung kayo ay estudyante. Kindly share the link to your uh, Learners, if you are also a teacher just like me, to your son or daughter, to your children, sa mga anak ninyo, o kayo po, mag-asawa, nanonood para ngayong uh, online classes during this pandemic, mas maturuan nyo sila. At talo na, sa mga nais talaga na maging mahusay na public speaker, magagamit po ninyo ito. Hindi lang sa school, lalong-lalo na in real life. Because as we all know, if you are a good public speaker, you have an edge in this society there is a higher possibility na ikaw ang mas maha-hire kaysa sa ibang kasama mo na nag-a-apply dahil mas magaling kang magsalita in public. Alright? And now, batiin natin ito ang ating earliest bird tonight, Mary Gabriel Balangkit. Hello po, Teacher Aubrey. I'll be waiting on your live lesson. Pa-shoutout po, Aguilion and Balangkit family. Hello, shoutout sa inyo. Ayan, I'm very glad. Uh, tayo ay 97 na. Meron na tayong kasamang 97 live audience tonight. So, I am... Uh, more excited kasi mas maraming matututo. Ayan. Aha. Nakasubaybay rin. Lagi raw nakasubaybay si Robin. Robin, thank you so much. Uh, Babylin Antonio, hello ulit ma'am. I am really excited na po. Kung excited ka, excited na rin si Teacher Aubrey. Ayan. Uh, good evening then Si Jeng na ating earliest bird last time. Kasama pa rin natin ngayon. Babylin Antonio, pa shout out po from Las Piñas City. Ayan. Sabi pa, Aha, uh -huh. excited na excited na po ako. Thank you so much, Mary Gabriel. Magandang gabi po, ma'am. Lagi kami nakasubaybay sa libreng pagtuturo. Nyo sa amin. Thank you. Ayan, salamat. Kami ang mga grade school. Sabi ni Elizabeth Rivera. Oh, wow! The comments are keep coming as well as our live audience tonight. So, the more late pala, mas maraming nanonood. No? We already have 124 live audience tonight. Thank you so much. Mm hmm Bastiin pa natin yung iba. Good evening, Feliza Corinio. Chalia Vlog, hello. Ariel Madigos, hello. Baby Lynn, hello. Mm, Gina Morales, Nancy Villaraza, hello, hello. Belmonts, good evening. Good evening, Baby Lynn. 
ang mama ko, Josephine Bermudez, na tinuluhan ako mag-prepare kanina before the live. Thank you rin sa masarap na ulam. Pinakbit nga pala ang ulam namin tonight. Ano ang ulam ninyo? <laughs> Aha. Hmm. Roblox Gaming. Sige, sagutin muna natin. Paano pagtamang pronounce ng A, E, E, O, U, O, patinig or vowels in English in Filipino language? As simple as that. A, E, E, O, U. A, E, E, O, U. Sa English kasi iba-iba. Pwedeng long vowel ang pronunciation, pwedeng short vowel. Pero didiscuss natin yan sa mga susunod nating live video. Si Bonnie de la Cruz. Hi, ma'am. Good evening po. Watching from Occidental Mindoro. Ayan. The comments are keep coming. Pa-shoutout po si Dan Vernon. Nagsubaybay po sa inyo para matuto magbasa ng English. Mar from Maribel Espares. Hello, hello, Maribel Espares. Thank you. Ayan. We already have 142 live audience. So let me ask you this before I begin our live lesson. Let's jump right into our lesson, mga... Mahal kong mag-aaral ha. May I ask you this question? Why is it important to be a good public speaker? O baka pa mahalaga na maging mahusay kang nagpagsalita sa harap ng maraming tao? What do you think are the benefits? Is there a benefit? Is there an advantage kapag mahusay kang magsalita sa harap ng maraming tao? Pwede niyo bang i-share sa ating community of learners tonight ano yung naranasan ninyo na bagay kung o ano yung naranasan ninyo na naging dahilan kung bakit kung minsan nung magsasalita kayo sa harap ng maraming tao ay hindi kayo nagtagumpay. O sabihin natin medyo na pahiya kayo, may ganun bang pagkakataon? Sige nga po, basahin natin. By the way, may nanonood sa atin from Netherlands si Rachel Escalona. Hello, good evening Rachel. Good afternoon, Virgie Andes. Siguro hapon pa sa kanila. Thank you, Lailani Sasaki. Ayan. So, syempre, mahalaga siya. Sabi ni Jaime, hello, Jaime. Sabi niya kasi, nadadagdagan yung confidence mo. ba? Kapag ikaw ay mahusay sa pagsasalita in front of the public. Syempre, Kaya rin tayo nahihirapan kung minsan magsalita in front of the public, ito ang karaniwang dahilan. Kinakabahan tayo. At hindi lang sa pagsasalita in front of the public. Maraming ibang uh, activity na ginagawa tayo na talaga namang kakabahan tayo, lalo na kapag kaharap mo ay maraming tao at magsasalita ka. Thank you, Nancy Villaraza. Araw-araw niya raw inuulat ang aking mga video. Salamat ha. And request ko lang sa inyo, my dear learners, do me a little favor not to skip the ads every time you are watching my videos here on YouTube. Yun lang, ganun kasimple lang yung favor na hihingin ko. Uh, wag niyo pong skip ang ads. Ayan. Nervyos. Tama naman, nervyos. Ayan, meron tayong viewers from UAE. Ayan. Mm-hmm. Wow, I'm happy because I can see the comments, the live comments that are keep coming. Eto pa, isang dahilan daw kaya tayo nag-fail or hindi nagtatagumpay kapag tayo ay nagsasalita in front of the public from Eugenio Dionesa, Dionesio Jr., lack of mastery. Isang dahilan, totoo. Kapag hindi ka handa sa sasabihin mo in front of the public, pwede kang ma... Ma, tawag doon. Ayan na. Nawawala na sa isip ko. Mawala sa isip mo yung dapat mong sabihin. Ano? Lack of mastery. Kinakabahan. Hello po sa Bahrain, Milda Los Banos Martinez. Alright. Sige, one minute na lang and then let's dive directly into our lesson. Lack of practice. Mm-hmm. Tama. Sabi ni Jean Lian, Ma'am, sana makompleto mo po yung 12 tenses of verbs ng video. Present simple at future simple pa lang po ata meron. Ayan, tatlo. Opo, dalawa pa lang yun, ano? And then yung all tenses. Don't worry. I'll make uh, the other videos para po sa other tenses. May labing, may sampung tenses pa kung hindi nagagawa ng video. Don't worry. I'll make the, I'll complete that series of videos para po sa inyo. Para mabalik-balikan ninyo kapag kayo ay nalilito. Siyempre, nahihiya. Ayan, meron rin tayong viewers from Japan. Nakapwa ko rin pala mga awit si Lailani Sasaki. Hello, kapatid. Alright, so 
Eto na, mag-start na tayo sa ating lesson and welcome to our 151 live audience tonight. And once again, I am requesting you, dear learners, to share the link of our live video on your social media accounts, on your messenger, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, sa mga kaibigan ninyo, direct message, para mapanood nila at matuto rin sila tonight at makinabang sila sa ating mga tatalakayang best tips on how you can become a good and confident and better public speaker. All right? And also, um, I'm requesting everyone to be participative on our live chat box. So if you're watching on your mobile devices, don't forget to leave a comment. Yes, a live comment on the chat box. Kung kayo nanonood sa mobile devices, nasa iba ba po ang live chat box. Kung kayo ay nanonood sa inyong mga mobile, sa inyong mga computers, sa inyong mga laptops, nasa inyong pong kanan, makikita nyo ang live chat box. And with that, let's begin. I'm going to begin our lesson with this quotation from Rob Brown way back 2013. Sabi niya, if you can speak, you can influence. If you can influence, you can change lives. Ulitin ko ha. If you can speak, you can influence. And if you can influence, you can change lives. That was according to Rob Brown way back 2013. Diba? How beautiful is that thing that we can change others' lives, others' minds, and others' per others' perspectives through just speaking? We can inspire people through speaking. Napakaganda nga power niyan, hindi ba? Sabi nga, kung hindi mo kayang maging uh, mahusay na tagapagsalita, kahit maging mahusay ang tagapakinig. Pero sa lesson natin tonight, sinasabi ko sa inyo na hindi imposibleng maging mahusay kayo sa pagsasalita. It just takes time. At may mga kailangan kayong gawin para magawa ito matagumpay. By the way, mamaya ako nababatiin ang iba pa po nga nag-re-request. Didire-diretso nating tatalakayin yung tips na ibabahagi ko sa inyo tonight. And then at the last part, batiin ko at babalikan nating batiin lahat po ng nag-re-request. So stay in tune at huwag po kayo nga mawawala. Kapag may mga tanong ako sa inyo, ilalagay niyo po ang sagot sa ating live chat box. All right? So let's begin. Our topic for tonight is this. I hope you can see this clearly. How to speak in public or the tips on how you can become a better and confident public speaker. How to speak in public. How to speak in public. So that's it. By the way, what do we mean by public speaking? Ano nga po ba ang public speaking? Public speaking, sasabihin ng iba, it is about uh, speaking in front of the public. Speaking in front of the public. Or it's a communication in front of the public. Or that's it. Speaking in front of many people. Public speaking, my dear learners, is a process of speaking to a group of people. It may be structured or... Uh, Impromptu, pwede rin namang hindi handa. Pwedeng pinaghandaan din. Deliberate manner intended to inform. Pwedeng kapag magsasalita ka in front of the public, pwedeng dahil gusto mong may ibahaging impormasyon to inform. To influence, gusto mong baguhin yung kanilang mindset. Okay? To influence. Or to entertain the listeners. Or pwedeng para uh, sila ay aliwin. Okay? Para sila ay aliwin. Public speaking is commonly understood as a kind of face-to-face -face speaking. Kapag sinabi natin public speaking, ito po ay live na nangyayari na kaharap mo yung maraming tao na magiging tagapakinig mo. Alright? Face-to-face speaking between individuals and audience for the purpose of communication. Again, communication. Take note of that, ha? Communication. So, Alam po ba ang kahulugan ng communication? Ayan. Ano ang kahulugan ng communication? Sige nga po, ilagay sa chat box. Ano po ang kahulugan ng communication? Sige nga po, basahin natin yung mga sagot. Ayan. Sabi, 
Okay lang hot popsy. Hello. Ha, he was five, his five minutes late. Hello, Englisher. Thank you for being present again tonight. Very interesting topic, Teacher Aubrey. Marami pong gustong matuto kung paano mag-public speaking. So sabi ni Aish Daudin, it is pakikipag-ugnayan. Pakikipag-ugnayan. Okay? Mm-hmm. Ano po po? Para sa iba? Ano po po? Ayan, sabi pa ni Lailani Sasaki, meaning, means sending or receiving information, sharing information, pakikipag-usap, conversation, and connecting with people. Aha. Thank you. Transferring of information, pakikipag-talakayan, pakikipag-usap, conversation, expressing feeling. All your answers are correct. All right. So when we say communication, my dear learners, it came from uh, the Latin word comunicare, nang na ibig sabihin ay uh, to share. Okay? To share or uh, magbahagi ng kaalaman. Okay? And the main reason why we are communicating is to share a particular thing to other people. And kaya tayo nagsha-share, gusto nating maiparating yung ating nararamdaman. Hindi ba? Dahil imagine na lang natin ang mundo kung tayo ay hindi makapagsasalita. Naku po, ang hirap magkaunawaan. So thank you for the blessing of language and communication. Kaya naman sa ating may mga um, kakayahang makapagsalita in front of many people, gamitin natin yon in a good way. So now, here we have the, seven, the 10 tips. Yes, the 10 tips for effective public speaking. All right. Just thinking about public speaking, my dear learners, uh, routinely it is described as one of the greatest and most common fears. Yes, ito talaga ang sinasabi nilang karaniwang kinatatakutan ng marami ang humarap at magsalita sa harap din ng maraming tao, hindi ba? Because it can make your palms sweat. Talagang kapag harap kayo sa maraming tao at magsasalita, pwedeng nangingin ng inyong mga kamay at pinagpapawisan kayo tumutulo pa ang mga butil-butil ninyong mga pawis. Yun yung karaniwan dahil talagang hindi naman lahat ay pinagkalooban ng husay sa pagsasalita sa harap ng maraming tao. So, ano nga ba ang kailangan tandaan at gawin para ma-overcome ninyo ang takot sa pagsasalita sa harap ng maraming tao? So, here are the many, or here are the 10 tips that we are going to discuss on how you can lessen the anxiety and learn to deliver a memorable speech in front of the public. So let's begin. Number one is this. Nervousness is normal. Practice and prepare. Again, our number one is practice and prepare. Ayan. Normal lang po na tayo ay kabahan. Normal yan dahil tayo ay mga tao. We are individuals. Sabi nga, kabahan ka kung hindi ka na kinakabahan. Kasi... Hindi normal na hindi ka kinakabahan, okay? Dahil kapag hindi ka na kinakabahan, aba, baka na pa sobra na yung tiwala mo sa sarili mo. That's being conceited. Kapag hindi ka na kinakabahan, kahit ang pinakamahuhusay na mga tagapagsalita, my dear learners, kahit ang mga politiko, kahit ang mga news anchor, kahit ang mga orators, the moment they speak or the moment they hold the microphone and face the public, I assure you, based on many uh, studies, lahat po sila ay kinakabahan. Pero the moment na lumipas ang isa hanggang dalawang minuto na sila ay nagsasalita in front of the public, napapawi po yung kaba. And in our tip number one, practice and prepare. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, no, normal ang kabahan. Nervousness is normal. So what do you have to do is to practice and prepare. My dear learners, kaya tayo kinakabahan ay dahil hindi tayo handa. Hindi ba? Kahit sa anong aspeto, kapag ikaw ay hindi handa, talagang kakabahan ka. Pero kapag handa ka, anong mangyayari? Siyempre, confident enough ka na harapin sila dahil wala kang kakatakutan, dahil alam mo sa sarili mong pinag-aralan mo yung sasabihin mo. Alright? Ano pa po? All people feel some 
physiological reactions like pounding hearts and trembling hands. Talagang yung means, yung iba talagang dinadaga pa, yun ang tawag nila. O kaya naman nanginginig-nginig pa ang kanilang mga kamay. And do not associate these feelings with the sense that you will perform poorly or make a fool of yourself. Huwag mong isipin na kesyo pinagpapawisan ng kamay mo, dinadaga ang iyong dibdib kapag ikaw ay magsasalira in front of the fo- in front of the public, ay sasabihin mo, nako, baka pagtawanan na nila ako. Don't feed your mind with such thoughts that will lessen your confidence. Sa halip, keep motivating your mind na kaya ko to, pinaghandaan ko to. I know this public speaking um chance I given to me will be successful. That's it. Okay? Some nerves are good. Yung ibang kaba, okay lang yan. Kasi dalabas dyan yung adrenaline mo eh, para mas paghusayan pa. The adrenaline rush that makes you sweat also makes you more alert and ready to give you best performance. The best way to overcome anxiety is to prepare Prepare and prepare some more. Take the time to go over your notes several times. So once you have become comfortable with material, list, my dear learners, what you have to do is to practice. Practice a lot. Videotape yourself or get a friend to critic your performance. So pwede kayong gumawa ng mga, yes, ng uh, bulleted um, outline. At pwede kayong tumingin tingin lang doon, pero huwag niyong babasahin. Ang mahalaga, alam niyo yung flow ng sasabihin niyo, alam niyo yung flow ng important details na kailangang maihatid niyo sa public. Again, our tip number one is to practice and prepare. So thank you so much to our 173 live audience tonight and for the comments that are keep coming. Now let's proceed to our tip number two. Our tip number two is... I'll just write it so that you'll take a picture or you can write on your notes. So in everything we do, my dear learners, always remember that it is important to know your audience. Mahalaga na kilala mo kung sino ang kakausapin mo. Kahit naman sa anong pagkakataon, di ba? Mahalaga na ahead of time, kilala mo yung haharapin mo. So our tip number two is to know your audience. Yes, Know your audience. Sana malinaw yan sa lahat, ha? Bakit po kailangang mahalagang kilalanin mo kung sino yung makikinig sa'yo? Because your speech is about them. Ulitin ko, ha? Mahalaga na kilalanin mo yung tagapakinig mo dahil ang speech mo ay hindi tungkol sa sarili mo. Your speech is about them. Again, know your audience because your speech is about them and not about you. Kapag tayo po ay naatasan bilang maging isang public speaker, hindi tayo nagiging public speaker para isipin natin papalakpakan ka ng marami para hahangaan ka. Bonus na lang yon. Kaya ka public speaker kasi gusto mong maka-influence sa mga tagapakinig mo. Gusto mong sila yung maging bida dahil sila yung dapat na mabago ang mindset after, after they listen from your speech. So ano nga pa ang iba pang dapat tandaan about our tip number two? Know your audience because your speech is about them and not you. Before you begin to craft your message, consider who the message is intended for. Bago ka uh, gumawa ng um, speech, sabi natin prepared speech, kilalanin mo, ang audience ko ay kapwa ko mga mag-aaral. Ang audience ko ay mga katrabaho ko. O kung ako ay guro, ang audience ko ay ang mga mag-aaral ko. O kung ikaw ay isang estudyante at makikinig sa'yo ang mga guru mo, ang audience ko ay ang mga teacher ko. So, ahead of time, kilalanin mo sino ang magiging audience mo. Learn as much about your listeners as you can. Alamin mo anong hilig nila. Ah, eto ang hilig ng mga mag-aaral ko. Kailangan mm, yung mga sasabihin ko sa aking speech ay yung mga bagay na makaka-relate sila. This will help you determine your choice of words. At kapag kilala mo ang audience mo, ako bilang, mag- bilang teacher, syempre advance yung level ko sa mga mag-aaral. Pero dahil ang mga listeners ko ay mga mag-aaral, ililevel ko sa level ng language nila yung mga salitang babanggitin ko. As a teacher or as a public speaker, kailangan yung language ay yung mauunawaan nila. Because that is the main reason why we are speaking or why we are communicating para maunawaan. Okay? And what else? This will help you determine your choice of words, level of information, organization pattern, 
and motivational statement. So, yun yung dahilan kung bakit kailangan ay kilalanin mo kung sino ang magiging taglapakinig mo. Again, our tip number two, know your audience. Alright, thank you so much to our live audience who are watching our live lesson tonight. Now, let's proceed to our tip number three. I'll just write our tip number three. So our tip number three, my dear learners, after practicing and preparing, after knowing your audience, is that you have to organize, yes, organize your material. Yeah, take note of that. You have to organize your material in the most effective manner to attain your purpose. So dito papasok yung tinatawag nating ABCs of writing. What do we mean by A, B, C of writing? A stands for accuracy. B stands for brief. O yung hindi sobrang haba. Brief lang. Concise. And letter C is coherence. Kailangan hindi paligoy-ligo yung sinasabi mo. If you have just one topic, then just focus on that para hindi naman ma-stress yung mga audience mo or yung mga tagapakinig mo. Ano ba yung sinasabi nung nagsasalita? Kanina sabi niya eto, ngayon eto naman. Parang naguguluhan ako. Maii-stress sa'yo yung tagapakinig mo at hindi ka napakikinggan. So, to maintain their attention, to keep their attention listening on you, what you have to do is to make the material that you are going to deliver in an organized manner and in the most effective manner para ma-attain mo yung purpose mo. So kung ang purpose mo ay para i-inform sila, make sure that you are equipped enough with the information or with the new knowledge and learnings na kailangang malaman nila. Kung ang purpose mo naman ay para ma-influence sila, maaari kang mag-share ng mga testimonials na kapag ginawa nila yung mga sinasabi mo, eto yung mga bagay na maaaring mangyari sa buhay o sa pamumuhay nila. And that way, masasabi natin, ginagawa mo yung role mo as a public speaker na ino-organize mo yung material para ma-maintain mo yung kanilang attention and para ma-achieve mo yung purpose mo. Create the framework for your speech. Gumawa ka ng framework. Write down the topic, general purpose, up to the specific purpose, up to the central idea, and the main points. Make sure to grab the audience attention in the first 30 seconds. Alam niyo po ba na ang pinakaumpisa ng kahit anong speech ang masasabi natin crucial. Bakit? Kasi dito magde-decide ang listeners mo kung makikinig pa ba sila o hindi na. Tandaan nyo, the first 30 seconds of any speech is one of the mo is the most crucial part. Tandaan nyo ha, yung first 30 seconds na nakikinig sila sa inyo, nako, magde-decide na yan kung itutuloy pa ba ang pakikinig o hindi na. So anong mag pwede nyo gawin para umpisa pa lang ay makinig na sila sa inyo at hindi kayo iwanan dahil alam nilang magiging kapaki-pakinabang ang ituturo ninyo. You may, you may do or you may have an attention Prepare an attention grabber. Ano yung attention grabber sa speech? Yun yung pwede kang magtanong sa umpisa pa lang para mapaisip sila ng higher order thinking skills na uri ng tanong or hot. O kaya pwede kang mag-crack ng joke o pwede kang mag-share ng isang sikat na quotation na sinabi ng isang sikat na tao na naging matagumpay na. So yun yung mga uri ng attention grabber na pwede mong i-prepare. Thank you, ha Hot Papsi. Communication is a way to express your thoughts an idea. Sabi naman ni Junior and Abon, practice makes perfect, but nobody is perfect. Yes, nobody is perfect, but when you keep on practicing, things will get permanent. Things will become part of your uh, system. Things will become part of your routine. Thank you watching from Bulacan. Ayan, hello, hello po. Mm -hmm. Tingnan natin saglit. Shout out kay Mark Jason from Nancy Villaraza. Thank you po. May mga nanonood din from Bukid noon. Ayan po. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Uh, good evening, teacher. Shout out po here in Amontay Beach Resort. Uh, that's from Arniel Flores. 
Yeah, thank you so much. And by the way, we still have 149, uh, 150 live audience. So we're done with our three tips. Dagdagan pa natin. Let's proceed to our tip number four. Our tip number four is watch for feedback and adapt to it. Ayan. Sabi daw, watch for feedback. I'll just write it down here. Watch for feedback. This is our tip number four, my dear learners. Watch for feedback and adapt to it. Adapt to it. So once you're done with your uh, rehearsals, pwede yung i-video di ba yung sarili ninyo? Pwede kayong tumawag ng mahusay na nagsasalita in front of the public at magpa-criticize kayo. Yes, magpa-criticize kayo. Hingan nyo sila ng feedback. Okay ba yung boses ko? Is my voice modulated enough? Is the information I'm delivering on my speech is enough para matuto at ma-influence ko yung aking tagapakinig? And then, from the feedback na, maki na makukuha at maririnig mo sa kinuha mong critic, syempre, tanggapin mo yun ang maluwag sa loob. Sabi nga, the only, uh, the biggest room in this world is the room for improvement. Yan daw ang isa sa pinakamalaking kwarto sa buong mundo. Ang kwarto o ang silid para ikaw ay mag-improve or the room for improvement. At mag-improve ka lang kung marunong kang makinig. At yung napakinggan mo ay ia-apply mo or ia-adapt mo. Alright? So in our tip number four, you have to keep focus on the audience. Alright? Gauge their reaction. Tingnan mo yung reaction nila. Kung nakikita mo yung reaction nila, kumukunot na yung noo nila. Baka hindi na sila interesado sa speech mo. Adjust your message and stay flexible. Being a public speaker, we have to be flexible. Yes, kailangan po tayo ay flexible. O yung tipong ngayon seryoso ka, pero pag tinignan mo yung mukha ng, speak, ng audience mo, aba parang inaantok na ata. Crack a little joke. Bring out your sense of humor para ma-maintain mo yung attention nila. Delivering a canned speech will guarantee that you lose the attention of or confuse even the most devoted listeners. So, kapag ang speech mo ay naramdaman nila na parang masyado namang kinabisado, parang word per word kinabisado, at mararamdaman ng audience mo kung sincere ka bilang uh, speaker, well, kapag ganun, kahit yung pinaka-dedicated listener, baka iwan ka sa ere. Alright? So, ano kailangan? Be a flexible speaker. Watch for their feedback. Look at their facial expressions and adapt to it. That's our tip number four. So, now let's proceed to our tip number five. Our tip number five is to... I'll just write here. Our tip number five is this. Listen carefully. Wait, 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 wait. I'll just write on our magic board. All right. Here we have our tip number five. Our tip number five is this. Let your personality come through. Again, let your personality come through. Last time from our last live lesson, sabi ko sa inyo, di ba? We don't need to compare ourselves. And the moment we stop comparing ourselves is the moment that our real personality come through. O lumalabas ang tunay na tayo kapag hinayaan natin maging unique tayo. At i-stop natin o itigil natin yung pagkukumpara ng sarili natin sa iba. May i-apply din yan natin sa public speaking. Pinakamasarap pakinggan ay ang mga speakers na hindi na nila kailangang magkunwari. Na hindi nila kailangang baguhin ang buong sarili nila to impress people. Most of the time and in real life, people will appreciate us if we are true to ourselves. And that is applicable also in public speaking. In our tip number five, my, my dear learners, let your personal personality come through in public speaking. What does this mean? It means that you just have to be yourself. 
maging ikaw ka, maging totoo ka. Don't become a talking head. In any type of communication, you will establish better credibility if your personality shines through. Kung ikaw ay malakas talaga ang sense of humor mo, then let it be. Let it be that way. And your audience will trust what you have to say if you if they can see you as a real person. Kapag nakita ng audience mo na very genuine ka kung ano ka talaga pinapakita mo while speaking in front of the audience or in front of your audience, then they will appreciate you much for being such genuine person or for being such real public speaker. So again, our tip number five is let your personality come through. That's our tip number five. Now let us have our tip number six. Isusulat ko na ang ating tip number six. Uh, just keep on listening. Ito na nga, ito yung gusto ko. Ako sa dami ng karanasan ko, makikwento lang muna ako sa inyo ha. I had this experience. I hope malinaw ang aking audio. <laughs> Sabi ni English Shara, Teacher Aubrey, what if the personality is really shy? Eto po. Yan yung mga karaniwang tanong. Paano po kung mahihain naman talaga ako at pinanganak na ata talaga ako na nakatakdang magkulong lang sa bahay dahil mahihain talaga? Maraming ganyan. Napakaraming ganyan mag-aaral ako na na-encounter. Yung iba pa nga, ito ang kinikwento ko, my dear learners, ay batay sa sarili kong karanasan bilang teacher. Meron akong mag-aaral when I was in private school. Meron siyang um, special needs. Ah, hindi yung special needs, pero mas kailangan niyang attention. So I think na uunawaan niyo ako. Meron siyang uh, ADHD. Kung sa, yun yung pagkakaalala ko. May ADHD siya. At ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Hindi siya ganun nakakapag-focus. Dahil hindi siya ganun nakakapag-focus, every time I'm calling his attention to speak in front of his classmates, to recite, ang nangyayari sa kanya, nanginginig talaga yung mga kamay niya. So, anong, kailangan, anong ginawa ko as his teacher, as their teacher during that time? That was way back 2016, five years ago. <laughs> five years ago. 2016 ako unang nagturo sa private school. Ang ginagawa ko, lagi ko siyang binibigyan ng pagkakataon na siya yung magsasalita. Kasi the moment, sabi ko nga sa unang tip natin, di ba? Kapag ang gaya ng sinabi ko sa unang tip natin, ang pinakamalaki, isa sa pinakamalaking takot ng marami ay yung pagsasalita sa harap ng maraming tao. Pero kaya ka lang natatakot dahil hindi ka handa, dahil hindi mo nakasanayan. So anong ginawa ko? Lagi ko silang pinibigyan ng activities na mapaperform nila yung kanilang pagsasalita, mapapractice nila yung pagsasalita. At kung kayo sa sarili ninyo mahihain, pero willing kayo na matuto, mas willing kayo na magsalita in front of many people, marami rin akong mga ganyang kaklase na ngayon mga teachers na rin sila, classmates ko ng college, mahihain talaga. Pero ano, syempre teacher kami, dapat nagsasalita kami in front of learners, in front of many people. Ang ginawa namin, Ang ginagawa ng teachers namin, mga prof namin ng college, ganun din. Kapag lagi natin ginagawa yung isang bagay at, na naka, at nakakasanayan na natin, nagiging bahagi na ng ating uh, memory muscles, nagiging bahagi na ng ating uh, muscles sa ating dila, sa ating bibig, nagiging part na ng routine natin kahit gano'n ka kamahiyain. In time, gradually, hindi man ganun kabilis, magigain mo yung sapat na confidence para humarap at magsalita sa maraming tao. So, yun po yung aking masasabi. Ito pa, sabi ni Kaimi, ito rin yung isang dahilan kung bakit ayaw magsalita ng marami sa harap ng maraming tao. Kasi yung boses nila, hindi maganda pakinggan, hindi modulated. Napakaraming paraan to modulate your voice. Makinig kayo ng podcast, ng audios, na pwede ninyong gayahin. Imitation is one of the very best ways. Isa sa pinakam-epektibong paraan ay ang imitation. Ano ibig sabihin? Maghanap ka ng audio material na pakikinggan mo. Okay yung boses, modulated. Okay yung enunciation, pronunciation, diction. Kapag nagsasalita yun, pakinggan mong mabuti. Pakinggan mong mabuti, sundan mo. Lagi mong gawin, everyday, kung talagang willing ka matuto. Yes, sabi ni English Shara, she recommends TED Talks. 
kapag kayo ay lagi nanonood sa YouTube, hanapin nyo yung uh, videos ng TED Talks or kahit sa Facebook. Pakinggan nyo lang, kahit nakapikit kayo, ang dami nyo matututunan. Ayan, makinig kayo ng mga materials with English contents or yung mga ganyang videos para mas maka-adapt kayo, mas ma-adapt ninyo, mas matutunan ninyo. At sabi ko nga, di ba, sabi ko lagi sa video ko, kapag may gusto kayong magawa, sa kahit anong larangan talaga, kapag may gusto kayong magawa, yes po, experience is the best teacher. Kapag may gusto tayong magawa at konsigido tayo, talaga wala pong imposible. Ano lang kailangan? Lagi mong pagsasanayan. Lagi mong pagsisikapan. Stop feeding your mind with the thoughts that will lessen your confidence. But instead, keep on feeding your mind with the thoughts that will uplift your confidence. Surround yourselves with people that motivate and uplift you. Humanap ka ng circle of friends na imumotivate ka. Humanap ka, sumama ka dun sa mga mahuhusay magsalita para mahawa ka sa kanila, di ba? Sabi nga, di ba, akong sinong kasama mo, maa-adapt at maa-adapt mo yung ginagawa nila. Ayan. And sabi ni Eugenio Dionesio Jr., tama po yan. Learning by doing, that is very effective. Yung tayo ay natututo kapag ginagawa natin yung bagay, yung isang bagay kapag lagi natin ginagawa, unknowingly, di ba? Natututunan na pala natin. That's it. Sabi pa ni Teacher Janet from uh, YouTube channel English Shera, I think it also has something to do with body language. Yung iba nakatayo lang talaga habang nagsasalita. Gestures can help for better public speaking. Yes, exactly. Alam nyo, meron po akong video on uh, what's the title of my video? Speak um, how to how to be confident. Paano maging confident? Panoorin nyo yung video na yon at tinalakay ko doon yung limang paraan na kung saan magiging, is, magiging effective at mahusay ka rin public speaker kapag ginawa mo yung limang tips na sinabi ko using your body language or your gestures. Makakatulong po ang gestures, the hand movements, the proper posture, the, uh, the eye contact. Okay? Yun yung tatlo sa sinabi ko doon sa mga tips na yon. Pero orin nyo yung video na yon or check this video by tomorrow. I'll put the link on our description box below. So ayan, ang dami nating bago nga nalaman. Dito na po tayo. Aha! Ayan ha. Si teacher. She's my co-teacher. She's my friend. Abangan nyo by the way yung upcoming uh, collab namin ni Teacher Janet of the YouTube channel English Shara. By the way, I'm inviting you na mag-subscribe kayo sa YouTube channel niya. Marami kayong matututunan, I guarantee you. <laughs> Ayan, dito na tayo. Ang dami kong sinabi. Tip number six tayo. Ito na nga yung sinasabi ko kanina. Ito. Kung kayo ay may natural ng ganitong talento, magandang bagay ito para kayo ay maging effective and confident public speaker. So our tip number six, my dear learners, is this. Tingnan po natin, basahin natin. Use humor. Yan, magpatawa kayo. Use humor. Ano pa po? Tell stories and use effective language. So what does these what do these tips mean? Ayan, tatlo kasi yan eh. Use humor, tell stories, and use effective language. Ano nga bang kahulugan nito? Siyempre, kahit naman sinong tagapakinig, ayaw natin makinig kapag ang nagsasalita ay boring. Boring, no? Pero, sabi ng prof ko yung Apoy College, one of my most favorite professors, Dr. Ariston Corpus, kapag tayo nagsasalita o nagtuturo, huwag naman puro rin patawa. Dahil baka pag natapos ang inyong lesson, baka ang natandaan na lang ng mga mag-aaral at tagapakinig mo ay puro jokes. <laughs> Wag naman ganon. So yun yung natandaan ko sinabi niya. Wag daw puro jokes dahil baka puro jokes na lang yung maalala. Malimutan na yung learnings. Tama naman. Pero humanap ka ng mga tamang pagkakataon para ka ng humor or joke. Okay? At ano pa, pwede kang magkuwento batay sa sarili mong karanasan Diyan na papasok yung tip number five. Makikita ng, learn, ng uh, audience mo, ng tagapakinig mo, kung sino ka talaga, kung ano yung personality mo. And of course, use effective language. So your audience are, uh, if your audience ay uh, mga formal, 
sa palagay mo, sila ay highly educated, mga kapwa mo professionals, of course, gumamit ka ng formal language. Kung ang mga tagapakinig mo ay mga mag-aaral pa lamang, still use a formal language pero i-level mo sa level ng kanilang um, pagkaunawa. Huwag masyadong malilalim ng mga salita, hindi kailangan yan. Karaniwan, akala natin kapag malalalim yung English natin, kung English yung gagamitin natin lengwahe, akala natin kapag sobrang lalim ng sinusulat natin or dinedeliver natin, ma-impress sila. Pero wag ka. Yung iba, actually, hindi na i-impress. Na-i-stress lang. Huwag tayong maging cause ng stress ng tagapakinig natin. Okay? So, use effective language. And also, in this tip number six, Ayun nga po, inject a funny anecdote in your presentation and you will certainly grab your audience's attention. Audiences generally like a personal touch in a speech, so tell stories and a story can provide that. So, pwede kang magkwento, tell a story, use humor, and use effective language. Again, that is our tip number six. Sabi ni... Uh, Hayan, thank you. Hello, good evening. Oh, wow. Hello, Sarbier. I know he's from Turkey, pero nagmagandang gabi. Hello, magandang gabi. Kagabi wala po akong live. Hindi kinaya. Sobrang napagod. <laughs> pero ngayon, nag-regain ako ng energy para makasama ko kayo tonight. Ayan, kasama rin natin tonight si uh, uh, Peter John Chavez. I really appreciate what you are saying, ma'am. Thank you. Kasama rin natin si Yan Yurel Badagwas. Hello, good evening. Pati na rin si Ad Besin. Besin. Great lesson, ma'am. Wow, thank you so much. You know what, as a teacher, ito yung fulfilling part sa amin. Eh. Yung na-appreciate ninyo at alam naming natututo kayo. <laughs> Nakakatuwa. Thank you so much. Sabi ni Mark Geek TV, ako po ma'am yung rap song po, practice ko sa pagsasalita ng English. Hey, pwede po ba yun? Pwede po. Any material na may English content, O kaya naman, as much as possible, yung mga, yung high quality. Ano ibig sabihin? Yung mas educational. Mas uh, mataas yung kalidad ng content niya. Ano po? Uh, dito na tayo sa ating tip number seven. Eto. Eto na. Eto ang wag na wag niyong gagawin. All right. So our tip number seven is this. Aha. Sabi po, don't read unless you have to. Huwag kang magbabasa ng script mo in front of the public. Maliban nila kung kailangan, kailangan mong mag-glance sa iyong uh, idiot board. Ano yung bismi idiot board? Or kahit small paper lang or index paper na kung saan, nandun lang yung mga points to remember. Pero wag mong babasahin. Bakit? Kasi kapag nagbasa ka ng ganyan, o oh, imagine niyo now that I am teaching you, I'm looking at this board and I'm just simply reading everything. Everything that I'm delivering. Anong mangyayari? Diba? Since there is no eye contact, walang connection. Yun ang wag niyong gagawin. Eye contact is very important in public speaking because eye contact creates the connection. Yes, eye contact creates the connection that there should be between you and your audience. Kaya, wag po kayong magbabasa maliban na lang kung kailangan, kailangan mong sumilip sa iyong uh, guide. Okay? So, in our tip number seven, don't read unless you have to. Work from an outline. Kailangan na may outline ka. Okay, sa unang part sa intro ko, about this. Sa second part, sa body, about this. Keywords lang. Okay? Yung tipong yung keyword na yun, pag nakita mo, sinilip mo, dun sa hawak mo na nakalagay sa rostrum, ah, eto na. Dito na ako sa part na to. Keywords lang po. Reading from a script or slide fractures the interpersonal connection. By maintaining eye contact with the audience, you keep the focus on yourself and your message. A brief outline can serve to jog your memory and keep you on task. Ayan nga po, mawawala ang eye contact kung ikaw ay nagbabasa. Ganun kasimple. Tandaan ninyo, kailangan kapag tayo ay nagsasalita in front of the public, we have to keep and or to maintain the connection with our audience at isa sa mga paraan ay ang ating constant eye contact. Again, that is our tip number seven. Don't read unless you have to. So what you have to do is to work from an outline. Now let's proceed 
to our tip number eight. Ayan, last three tips na lang po. Last three tips na lang. And thank you to our 154 live audience tonight. Thank you dahil patuloy niyo akong sinasamahan. Sabi ni Rosemary Ignacio, first time kong mag-view sa inyo. Ang dami ko pong natututunan agad. Amazing teacher. Wow, thank you so much, Rosemary Ignacio. Salamat. Salamat po. Tama. Tama po yung mga comments ninyo. Okay, dito tayo. <laughs> Parang di talaga napapagod si ma'am. O, sabi ni Aisha Odin, napapagod naman. Pero syempre, kapag kaharap mo, kapag dedicated ka sa ginagawa mo, gusto mong maging maganda, di ba? Kailangan may sapat ng energy. <laughs> Okay lang, Freddy, Remi, Freddy Jimenez. In, kung nahuli man kayo ngayon sa ating live, um, pwede nyo namang i-replay po itong ating video. Sabi naman ni uh, love, love Leia Parilla, Hi, Teacher Aubrey. I'm watching you here in Brazil with my sister Jessie. Ayan, hello. Nakakarating na pala tayo sa Brazil. Hello po sa inyo dyan. Dito na tayo sa ating tip number eight. Eto, isusulat na ni teacher ha, para mabasa ninyo. So on our tip number 8, dito na nga, connected na dito yung video na ginawa ko na paano maging confident. Dun sa video na yon, ayan, ilalagay ko yung link sa taas after this video ha, paano maging confident. Sa video na yon nagbigay ako ng limang tips or limang paraan na kung saan ginagamit natin ng body language para maging effective speaker tayo. So, ayan, meron ding nanonood from Belgium. Hello, Mary Lou Cura, and hello sa iyo dyan. <laughs> Pang-international na si Ma'am, yes, pang-worldwide web tayo, syempre, maraming naaabot ang ating pagtuturo. Kaya muli, I'm requesting everyone na i-share po ang link ng ating live video para po mas maraming matuto, mas maraming mag improve So, our tip number eight is use your voice, yes, use your voice and hands effectively and emit nervous gestures. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? Makakatulong nga yung sinabi rin ni Teacher English Shara kanina na gumamit tayo ng gestures. Hand gestures will do, but don't overuse your hand gestures. Huwag yung tipong lahat ng sinabi mo ay eh, nagganong ka na nang nagganong. Sa halip na mag-focus ang learners or ang audience mo sa mensaheng gusto mong iparating, baka na-focus na lang sila sa kilos ng kamay mo. <laughs> and also, uh, don't do, may mga tinatawag tayo na mannerisms. Minsan, di ba, may mga mannerisms. Yung mga mannerisms ng mga nagsasalita, yun yung karaniwang nakakaagaw ng atensyon, nakaka-distract sa ating mga uh, audience, sa ating mga tagapakinig, sa ating uh, mga estudyante, kung tayo ay teacher. So, refrain natin, bawasan natin yung mga hand gestures na sobra, pero makakatulong yun, Okay. So, listen carefully to our tip number eight. Use your voice and hands effectively. Omit nervous gestures. Non-verbal communication carries most of the message. Totoo po yan. Yung tipong, di ba, kapag may kakilala tayo, minsan kahit hindi pa lang magsalita, tingnan mo pa lang sa mata. Tingnan mo pa lang sa mata, tila alam mo na yung gusto niyang sabihin. Yung tipong, lalo sa mga magulang, kapag hindi pa nagsasalita yung anak, pero nakita niya na nanginginig na yung kamay. Ah, may ginawa tong mali. Ganun din naman sa pag, kapag tayo ay nagsasalita. Malaki ang naitutulong ng ating uh, tinatawag na non-verbal communication. Yun nga po yung gestures, eye contact, proper, um, what do we call this? Posture. Malaki na tutulong yan para magbigay ng mensahe sa ating tagapakinig. Good delivery does not call attention to, ins to itself, but instead conveys the speaker's ideas clearly and without destruction. That's it. At syempre nga, maganda rin is yung emojulate natin yung boses natin. Hindi natin kailangan sumigaw. Lalo kung tayo ay may gamit na microphone. By the way, I'm using this Boya microphone. Sana malakas at effective. <laughs> Ayan. Hindi kailangan sumisigaw kapag ikaw ay nagsasalita. Sabi nga ng professor ko sa Masteral, Dr. Quijano, sabi niya, when I was reporting, naalala ko lang, <laughs> that was uh, two years ago, kapag ikaw ay nagsasalita in front of uh, your audience, hindi mo kailangan kapag nasa loob kayo ng isang kwarto, hindi kailangan pasigaw at marinig pa ng tao na nasa labas yung boses mo. Okay? Anong kailangan? Kailangan po, kailangan ay sapat lang na naririnig ng mga tao na nasa loob po 
nung kwarto na audience mo. Okay? Doon kasi natin masusukat kung gaano kamodulated ang boses. At i-practice natin na i-practice para mas kamodulate natin ang boses natin. And again, that's our tip number eight. Use your voice, enhance effectively, and omit nervous gestures. And tip number nine, eto na. Malapit na po tayo. Our tip number nine is very important. Actually, lahat naman ng tips na ito ay mahalaga. Walang hindi mahalaga dito sa mga binabanggit ko. Kapag na-practice ninyong ginagawa ito, I'm pretty sure magiging effective public speaker po kayo. Pero tandaan, walang bagay na nakamit natin na pagtulog natin, kinabukasan, meron na agad. Yung mga ganitong bagay, it takes time. It, it needs so much time to practice para maging mahusay tayo. For our tip number nine, Dear learners, nakikita bang malinaw? Our tip number nine is grab attention at the beginning and close with a dynamic ending. Hmm, ayan. Okay, maya-maya, basahin ko yung comments. Natutuwa ako may nang nababasa ang kakaibang comments. Basahin ko maya-maya yan. So our tip number nine is grab attention at the beginning and close with a dynamic ending. Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, the first 30 seconds of your speech will be the crucial part for your audience, for them to decide whether they will keep on listening on you or they will stop listening. Because you you fail to grab their attention at the beginning. So anong kailangan? Gumawa ka ng attention grabber. You may strike um, a question, not just a simple question, but a question that will stimulate their minds to think. Oo nga, no? ano nga ba ibig sabihin nun? Ganun. Pwede kayo magbigay ng humor, magpatawa sa umpisa ng konting konti light. O kaya naman ay magbigay ng quotation ng isang successful na tao. So in our tip number nine, grab attention at the beginning. Umpisa pa lang kailangan. Ma-make sure mo na na nag-grab mo yung attention nila at kailangan din kung napanatili mo yung attention nila the entire time of your speech, what you have to do is to close that with a dynamic ending. What does that mean? Listen carefully. Do you enjoy hearing a speech with this? Ito yung sabi. Today, I'm going to talk to you about X or about a particular topic. Siyempre, karamihan sa mga tao, ayaw ng ganun. Kapag sinabi niya directly, ang pag-uusapan natin sa araw na ito ay ito. Let's try to become more artistic. Let's try to become more creative. Okay? Instead, use a startling statistic, an interesting anecdote, or concise quotation. Conclude your speech with a summary and a strong statement that your audience is sure to remember. Mag magbigay ka ng isang linya na sa palagay mo, eto, pag binitawan mo tong linya na to, hindi malilimutan ng tagapakinig mo ang iyong sinasabi. Sabi nga ni Teacher English Shera, it's like a hook. Applicable din for writing as a yes, tama. Para siyang hook, yung tipong kapag, uh, kapag itong damit na hook, hindi ka na makakaalis. Diba? Hinuhok ko yung sarili ko. <laughs> Ayan, hook nga naman, tama, hook, no? Kapag na-hook ka, di ba? Yung tipong, di ba, parang ano yan eh, um, head turner. Isang taong head turner yan eh. Pag naglalakad ka, nakita mo na siya sa unang beses, pero hindi pwede, hindi mo ulit tingnan. Dapat ganun tayo kapag tayo magsasalita in front of many people. No, not ex-girlfriend. It's just about letter X. Generation X. Yun po yung sinabi ko kanina. Okay. Sinestor late din daw siya from Qatar. Hindi po kayo late ha. Um, pwede nyo pa rin namang i-replay tong video mamaya. Sabi ni Mark Gerald Kalma, Ma'am, 12 years old na ako. Hindi pa din makaintindi ng English. Pag nagbabasa ako, hindi ko maintindihan. Anak, Wag mo istresin ang sarili mo. Bata ka pa. Matututo't matututo ka. Wag mo itigil ang pagbabasa. Manood ka ng mga videos with English contents. Manood ka ng videos sa YouTube, ng mga pelikula in English. Hanggat maaari yung may subtitle para nababasa mo, anak. Ha? Wag mo wala ng pag-asa. Wag kang ma-stress. Matututo't matututo ka. Okay? 12 years old ka pa lang. Matututo't matututo ka pa. Ay, thank you, sabi ni Freddie Jimenez. Ma'am, hindi halatang pagod kayo kasi maganda pa rin kayong dala kayo. Dalawa kami ng anak ko nanonood niya sa iyo. Ay, thank you so much kung estudyante kita. May additional points ka sa akin, Freddie. 
<laughs> All right, thank you so much. So though that is our tip number nine. Na dito na tayo sa ating tip number. 10. Sa ating last tip, I'm very happy because kahit late in the evening now, we still have 175 live audience na talaga namang I know for sure willing matuto at mag-improve sa kanilang public speaking experiences. And for our tip number 10, eto po ah. Naalala ko, bago ko sabihin sa inyo to, when I was in college, no ako college, way back, that was way back 2014. Third year college ako? Tama ba third year college ako? 2014. Third year college ata. <laughs> Mas na 2016 ako gumraduate. Uh, I was the school college president sa student council. Student government. Ako po yung president. Pinadala kami sa isang... And, and dami ko kasing na-experience noon at narinig na mahuhusay na public speaker. I will just share with you. Pinadala kami sa convention. Yes, convention sa pagtitipo ng lahat ng mga student leaders ng mga colleges, different universities and colleges sa buong Pilipinas. Ginanap yun sa teacher's camp sa Baguio City. Tanda ko yun. That was October yun eh. Tanda ko siya. Hanggang kayon malinaw sa isip ko. Nung time na yon, three days ata kami or four days, nagstay kami doon, araw-araw, ang dami naming naririnig na public speaker, na mga professors, sharing their leadership experiences with us to inspire us on leading um, student council. Anong napansin ko? Anong napansin ko nung time na nakikinig ako? Gumagamit kasi sila, kapag kasi tayo nagsasalita in front of the public, lalo sa mga seminars din, pwede tayong gumamit ng PowerPoint presentation. Ang napansin ko that time is, hindi nila nilalagay lahat ng information na sinasabi nila sa PowerPoint. Bakit? Kung gagawin nyo rin yon at magsasalita kayo, kukunin kayong speaker, my dear learners, my dear uh, live audience tonight, Huwag niyong ilagay lahat ng sasabihin niyo sa PowerPoint or sa present day makaturo. Wala naman ako PowerPoint doon, no? Pero yun kasi yung usual, nandiyan yung PowerPoint, nandito ka nagsasalita, no? Uh, huwag niyong ilalagay lahat doon ng sasabihin niyo. Bakit? Kasi hindi na makikinig sa inyo yung audience niyo. Titingin na lang doon sa sinasabi niyo. Pwede kayong gumamit ng uh, mga pictures that will summarize whatever you are saying on a particular, uh, uh, on a particular topic. Ano po? With that, our tip number 10 is this. Listen carefully. Use audiovisual aids wisely. Kapag tayo po ay magsasalita, kapag sa mga seminar, pwede kayong gumamit ng video, merong pictures, ang gagamitin ninyo ay yung talaga namang pinag-isipan. Wisely. Pinag-isipan. Pinaghandaan. Listen carefully to this tip. In tip number 10, my dear learners, too many can break the direct connection to the audience. Ito na nga yung sinasabi ko. Na kapag gumagamit kayo ng audio audiovisual aids, huwag niyong gagawin na lahat eh nandun na. Yung tipong kahit mawala na kayo sa harap ng mga tagapakinig, eh okay lang. Bakit? Kasi lahat ng information nandun niya sa audiovisual aids ninyo. Bakit? Kasi sa ganung paraan, mapuputol yung connection niyo sa inyong tagapakinig at sa inyo bilang speaker kasi doon na sila magfo-focus. So, use them sparingly. Salit-salit lang. Papakita niyo yun, pero dapat sa inyo pa rin sila mas makikinig. They should enhance or clarify your, your content. Tandaan niyo, kapag kayo magsasalita in front of the public when you are going to use PowerPoint presentation, let us say on a seminar na kayo ang speaker, kailangan yung audiovisual materials na yon ay magagamit lang to enhance and clarify your content. Hindi para agawan kayo ng role as the speaker. Or just to capture and maintain your audience's attention. So take note of that. And tama ka, Karapi Kasirano, lahat naman talaga ng bagay ay dapat na pinag-iisipan. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. May nanonood din sa atin from Dipolog City, Ame Zednem. Hello, hello, hello po sa inyo. Sabi ni Dr. Strange, I swear I learned more from YouTube than I do in college. Alam niyo, ako naman, share ko sa inyo ha, ako naman, natuto talaga ako ng college. When I had my uh, board exam way back 
September 25, 2016. That was a rainy Sunday. Yes, well, you know what it's alaala ko. <laughs> I took my uh, board exam at Araulio High School. Doon ako nag-exam. Tanda ko pa yan. Actually, hindi ako nag- uh, tawag dyan. Hindi ako nag-review center. Hindi po ako nag-review center. Bakit? Kasi sabi ko sa sarili ko, nagtitiwala naman ako sa inaral ko nung college ako eh. Talagang marami rin naman kayo matututunan, i-dedicate nyo, i-focus nyo yung sarili nyo kung kayo'y nag-aaral, lalo kung ang course ninyo ay may board exam. Sa mga kapwa ko, magiging teachers din, sooner or later, na nagtitake up ng education course, um, mag-focus kayo sa pag-aaral. No? Pero makakatulong talaga yung pag-review center kung meron kayo budget. Ano po? And ako kasi ano, nagtiwala lang ako sa panata, sa prayer, at ipinagkalaob naman sa akin. Si, ayan, Tito Ryan Cruz. Hello po. Hi, Teacher Aubrey, watching from Giginto, Bulacan. Hello, hello po, Tito Ryan. Magandang gabi po. So, that's our last tip to use audiovisual aids wisely. So, those are our 10 tips. Balikan lang natin muli isa-isa the 10 tips on how you will become or, or how you can become a better and more confident public speaker. Again, the tip number one is nervousness is normal. What you have to do is to practice and prepare. Tip number two is know your audience. Your speech is about them and not about you. Tip number three is organize your materials in the most effective manner to attain your purpose. Tip number four is watch for feedback and adapt to it. Tip number five is let your personality come through. Our tip number six is to use humor, tell stories, and use effective language. Tip number seven is don't read unless you have to. Work from an outline. Our tip number eight is use your voice and hands effectively. Omit nervous gestures. Tip number nine is grab attention at the beginning and close with a dynamic end. And for our tip number ten, use audiovisual aids wisely always remember my dear learners practice does not make perfect because nobody is perfect but practice constant practice will make things more permanent in everything we do be it on public speaking be it on writing or be it on different hobbies that we are interested in good communication is never perfect my dear learners and nobody expects you to be perfect because nobody is perfect. However, putting in the requisite time to prepare will help you deliver a better speech. You may not be able to shake your nerves entirely, but you can learn to minimize them. So once again, those are our 10 tips on how you can become a better and effective public speaker. By the way, I would like to acknowledge my resource or my uh, source for this uh, tips. This was from a professional from the blog of Harvard, from the blog of Harvard University. Doon ko po nakuha itong mga tips na binigay ko sa inyo and most of this ay talaga namang batay rin sa aking sariling karanasan. And with that, so thank you so much for staying with me. Pero hindi pa tayo tapos ha, babatiin ko pa yung mga naririto sa ating live audience. Thank you so much, Teacher English Shara, for staying with me until the last part of our uh, lesson. I love your heaps, Teacher Aubrey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sabi naman ni Bonnie de la Cruz, thank you, ma'am, for imparting your knowledge. Big help po. God bless you always and keep safe. That's what I'm always praying for you, my dear learners. Thank you for making this community bigger and bigger, wider and wider. Sobrang saya ko. Bakit? Kasi marami na aabot ang aking pagtuturo. Dati akala ko, magiging teacher ako sa loob lamang ng apat na sulok ng paaralan o sa loob lang ng apat na sulok ng classroom. Pero ipinagkaloob ng Panginoong Diyos na mas maraming maabot ang pagtuturo para mas maraming matuto. So, I am very thankful kung hindi dahil sa inyo, kung hindi dahil sa ating YouTube online community of learners, hindi po maisa sa katuparan, hindi ko maisa sa katuparan itong ganitong pagtuturo. Kaya, maraming salamat po sa suporta na patuloy nyo ibinibigay. Sabi naman ni... Jean Leyan, ma'am, tuwing kailan po ba kayo magla-live? May schedule po ba? Wow, that's a good question. Aha, uh -huh. since bakasyon na namin sa so public, <laughs> siguro mapapadalas, pero wala akong definite date na ibibigay dahil ayokong mabigo kayo. Kapag magla-live ako, mag a ako at least three hours earlier. So, anong gagawin ninyo? Paki-on po ninyo ang mga notification bell 
punta kayo sa YouTube channel ko. Kung di pa kayo nakapag-subscribe, baka yung ibang nanonood dito ay hindi pa pala nakasubscribe, pindutin niyo po yung, noti- yung subscribe button para mapabilang kayo sa ating YouTube Online Community of Learners. At para lagi kayong updated kapag may bagong upload si Teacher Aubrey, turn on the notification bell. Kaya kapag may bago akong uploaded video, Unang-una kayong manunotify o kapag naman meron akong lalabas na upcoming live at least 3 to 4 hours earlier before my live pero karaniwan 8.30 to 9 p.m. ako magsisimula dahil ganong oras na riyan ang aking live audience. Okay? At kapag nakita nyo yon, iset nyo yung reminder on para po uh, at least ilang minuto bago mag-umpisa, remind uli kayo sa inyong mga mobile devices or sa inyong laptops. Ano pa po? Batiin din natin si Max Smith. Sabi niya, Mom, thank you for all the knowledge you have shared. Maraming salamat na appreciate niyo yung ginagawa ko. Aha, Dr. Strange, thanks teacher Aubrey for your English online te- uh, for being an English online teacher. Wow. Thank you, that's from Belgium. Aha, uh-huh. sending my full support from Bing Kiachon. Watching from Bahrain from MMMM. If free time I am interesting, I'm interested to watch your channel. From Eugenio Dionesio Jr., ma'am, very interesting ka magturo, effective and efficient. Wow. Oh, assignment mo sa akin, Eugenio. Anong pinakaiba ng effective at efficient? <laughs> Sige, search nyo yan now. What's the difference between being effective and being efficient? Ilagay nyo sa comment section sa iba ba, kahit huwag na sa live chat box para mabasa ng iba. Ayan, watching from Bacolod City, si Bing Katshon. Uh, si Susie naman, good evening, Teacher Aubrey, watching from Binangonan. From Binangonan. Ayan, let me ask you. Marami po ba kayong natutunan tonight? Hangad ko na marami kayong natutunan and if you really do learn a lot, I'm requesting you to like this video and also to share this to your friends para mas marami pa pong matuto. At kung hindi pa ka kayo bahagi ng ating YouTube online community of learners, I am requesting you and I am inviting you to become a part of it. What you have to do is just as simple as this to click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you will always be updated every time I have new videos or upcoming live videos and also i'm inviting you to subscribe to my second channel in which i do vlogs together with my family it is a aubrey and family lifestyle tv i am going to put the this the link on our description box below or if you go directly onto my youtube channel you'll see the featured channel mag subscribe din po kayo oh but may sagot na sa assignment si robert saez efficient does something quickly Effective, doing things right, haha, <laughs> just opinion. O sige nga, keep sharing your thoughts about it. Thank you po, uh, Michael Deneza Alteza. Pabati naman po ma'am, Arnold Villason. At tinagalog ni Mark Gerald Calma, effective po, epektibo. Yung efficient naman po, secret. Hmm? <laughs> Alam niyo ba bilang teacher, share ko sa inyo ha, sa mga magti-teacher dyan. Turo sa akin ng professor ko, kapag may tinatanong, minsan may mga mag-aaral tayo na i-challenge yung kaalaman natin. Alam kaya ito ni teacher, pag tinanong tayo, teacher, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Minsan, alam na ng estudyante kung yung kahulugan nun, chine-challenge lang tayo. Pero dahil ang katotohanan, hindi naman lahat ng teacher ay alam ang lahat ng bagay. Yun ang totoo. Hindi natin alam ang lahat ng bagay bilang teacher. So ano ang gagawin? Kapag may ganong estudyante sa mga magiging teachers in the future, ang sasabihin nyo sa estudyante nyo, yan! Maganda yung sinabi mo. Assignment mo yan ha, para sa susunod na klase, ikaw ang share sa kanila. So ayun, pwede mong ipa-assignment sa kanila kung hindi mo alam. Pero as a teacher, it's also must na uh, sa mga upcoming uh, teachers, sa mga future educators, we are books ahead, we are chapters ahead, we are lessons ahead sa ating mga learners. And before I end this video... Aha, uh-huh, yes, 162. Kanina umabot nga tayo 190, kaya marami pong salamat. So before I end this video, let me share with you, let me share with you this quotation. Sabi ko sa inyo, bago natin tapusin lagi ang ating uh, topic, may babahagi ako sa inyong motivational quotation mula sa mga matatagumpay na rin mga tao. Sabi po ni Ralph Waldo Emerson, sabi ni Ralph Waldo Emerson, he is a writer. He is a famous literature writer. Sabi niya, 
all great speakers were bad speakers at first. Ulitin ko ha. All great speakers were bad speakers at first. Sabi niya, lahat daw ng mga mahuhusay na tagapagsalita ay nagsimula rin naman na hindi mahuhusay. Ano lamang ang kahulugan yan? Na kapag kayo ay gusto niyo talagang maging effective public speaker, tandaan niyo, walang ipinanganak na mahusay na agad magsalita. Lahat ng yan ay pinagsanayan, pinaghirapan, at pinagsikapang magawa at makamit. Kaya ano lang kailangan? Gawin lang ang patuloy na paghahanda, pagpapractice, at sundin yung sampung tips na ibinigay ko kung nais niyo talagang maging effective public speaker. Again, from Ralph Waldo Emerson, all the great speakers were bad speakers at first. Walang ipinanganak na mahusay, lahat tayo ay nagsimula na wala lang din alam. Walang alam, hindi marunong, hindi mahusay. Kaya po, tandaan na ano man ang inyong mga edad, ano man ang inyong estado sa buhay o narating sa buhay, basta meron kayong gustong matutunan. Tandaan na wala pong imposible, ano lang kailangan gawin. Lagi lamang kung pagsisikapan at pagsasanayan. And thank you so much for making this evening very fruitful and worthwhile together with you, my dear learners. Thank you for staying with me up till this time, 10.16 PM Philippine Standard Time. Maraming maraming salamat po. And God bless you all. Bye for now. Bye-bye po muna. And see you on my next live video. Bye.